G'day viewers, Ivan here from Peak Off-Road Weatherall Park, Sydney, Australia. Um, we're back in the, uh, in the showroom stroke studio and today is, um, more importantly, it's a little bit more in depth about fitting an alley cab tent to a specific, uh, specific as in canopy, road load bars and what it actually entails and we're going to go run through all that now. So what you've got basically here in here is the Gen 3 tent. This is the current model tent. The lights are up the top and there's plenty of videos with the lights and what's internal with the pockets, uh, double canvas, um, midgy proof mesh, um, struts internally, uh, also the all different options of mounting it onto it. So what we're gonna do now is just go straight through the specs, straight off the book, right? So the tent, from looking from back to front, is 1400 wide. So 1400 is the actual back of the tent. And then on the end of the tent, you have little rails, which are these little rails here. And they're around about 20 mil. So the overall width of the tent is 1450. So that's pretty important when you've got a canopy with the doors that are flying up. Uh, you wanna make sure you've got that 1450 before your door starts. So if your door on a, on a canopy uh, like an aluminium canopy that you actually make on a, on a tray back. If the door opens up like a gull wing, like the two gull wings, like this, you want to make sure that you've got that 1450 spacing. Otherwise your tent won't fit. Or if it does fit, it has to go a little bit higher and that kind of look, you know, makes, makes it a little bit more difficult further on. So you've got 1450 across the back. The alley cab tent actually narrows. So when it gets to about 1500, so from the back corner to the first fold, right here, this is 1500. And then you have 800 to the end. So that makes a total length of 2300. So when you've got a 2.4 metre tray and you're mounting on the top, that's great. Uh, it will be no overhang at all. If you have a dual cab, for instance, sake, like a Ford Ranger or a Hilux or whatever that is, your canopy is normally 1500 or 1800, depending again on the type of car you got. Again, you've got for the extra cabs a little bit longer. But then there is an overhang. So you've got the back of the, of the tub and then the overhang is roughly 800 millimetres. So when you get the 800 millimetres, when you're building your actual setup on your cab, what we, what we require is from the bottom of the tent, so the bottom the bottom rail, from the bottom of the bottom rail to the turret or the roof of your car. So just imagine your car is right here, right? We want a gap of 60 mil. So if when you're building your truck, you get your overall layout, you put 60 mil above the, uh, the car, that's where the top of your tent should land. And that will give you a beautiful, beautiful profile. Um, so remember the measurement, this is important, 60 mil. You can go 100, can go 120, but that 60 mil is mi minimum for 800, 800 overhang. So the overhang, because your tub and your car moves at different rates, and that will give you that clearance that you need. So you're definitely not a touch. So remember that, 60 mil. So now we move on to uh, physically mounting the uh, tent onto it. So normally, uh, if you build your tent or the tents, if you build your canopy or whatever you're mounting it onto, you can actually flush mount it. Now in the old drifter days, uh, they just drill straight through and put it onto the frame of the trailers. Um, there's plenty of examples of that and that works fine. Big washer, you've got, you got a 10 mil sponge and then you have the mattress. So the bolt of the head, the head of the bolt will never be in your way, never chafe or anything. So you can do that first off, drill straight through, find your supports, try and drill here somewhere, three lots, two lots, 800 overhang is still fine. So you can do that. Okay, the next method is to put it on a set of Rhino bars. So the Rhino bars are these bars. So these come, the Gen 3 tents come with these brackets, there's four of these. And these, I'll just turn over to here, these mount along here. Right, so I'll just move this bolt across if I can. Will it go across? 
Yep. Okay. So you put one here, and then you put another two bolts that run through here, which it's already here, and they roll in and out, and basically they all line up. There you go. And then you can put your Rhino bar mounted as so. That's the same scenario with the Rhino bar, the front runner bar, the yellow cab bar, and uh, galvanized unistrut bar, which is basically what a Rhino bar is. So you, unistrut bar is just a general substrate that everything gets mounted on. So when you're building your canopy, realistically you should use this. Uh, even though it's 40 mil high, then if you want to remove the tent and sell it, you can always go back and say, right, you can put a boat loader on it or whatever else is needed. So again, we'll show you the two other options. This is the yellow cab bar. Is that tight? Yeah. So basically, that's the yellow cab bar, and you can also mount there as another extrusion option. So these are the four, two on each side. So you put your first one here, roughly 250 millimetres from the end of where you want the tent. So when you're building your canopy or whatever you're building, you go and plan for your tent to be wherever the back of your tent you want to be, and then your first support should be at 250 mil. What that allows is at 250 mil, you can grab the first point of the bar right here along the, 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 uh, the substrate we've got here, or the extrusion, and also mount it. Now, the reason for this is, and just stay there, Artie, is when you go to mount, when you go to mount a canopy, which you can on these cars, it leaves enough room for that tool to happen, right? And also, in mind saying that, um, this works on both sides. So you can have canopy opening left and right. Oh, sorry, not canopy, awning opening left and right. So that's the, uh, how you fit it to uh, an alley cab bar. And this is a front runner bar. Now this has got a different bracket. So now you know you've got the front bracket, uh, the two, four brackets here, one here, one here, roughly, anywhere around here is fine. And then the last one, if you're running on a wagon, for instance, sake, like a GU 80 series, 200 series with a Rhino rack, Rhino rack backbone system, you will need a third, third bracket. Now this bracket, is made specifically to mount on here to have the 800 overhang. But because we're in Australia and the tent actually goes in, the bracket then, sorry, this way, goes over here where this one will miss. Do you see the difference? And you just need it to support the front. So I think that just about covers how to mount that. Uh, how you mount the uh, bars to your canopy, whether you use direct bolting method, or in the other case is if you're going to screw like uh, the unistrut bar directly to um, the canopy via a bolt that goes up through the top, and we'll show you a picture of that. I've got a couple of pictures that will go in set right now for you up there. Right, so now we go back to the measurement of the tent, 14, 1400 across the back, 1450, and then you add the top of the bolts as well, you can add another 20 mil there or 15 mil. At the front of the tent, the tent does go in. So it, it's not a coffin. It actually has some forms of aerodynamics. Uh, not a great deal, but you know, good attempt. So it actually tapers in from 1400 to 1300 at the front. 1400 to 1300, and then it drops down. From the top, so now we go to the height. From the top, to the bottom where it mounts here is 270 millimetres. That includes everything. So that's the maximum height off whatever substrate you're running off. So 270 millimetres from here to here. Again, as you see with this tent, everything bolts to the tent. Awning, ladders, accessories. You can put a solar panel on here. You can put it on here. Um, BRS do a, a fantastic uh, camper called a Sherpa and they run a 200 watt solar panel on the top which basically takes the whole top roof. Um, a massive solar panel. Uh, here you can also mount these directly like this with the, uh, the feet. So these are the feet and also the adapters. So if you want to run a, a platform rack you take these off and just use these adapters. So, so basically these adapters is to go from the alley cab system 
to a rhino, a front runner, whatever other else. So they're the adaption that you need. Um, as you can see, we've just mocked up a couple of things here. This Fisk, Fisk uh, shovel is very good. It only weighs bugger all. Now talk about weight. The tent, and I have weighed this particular tent here to my left, it is weighing in at 83 kilos, 83. So those guys who um, have got a load limit of 100 kilos or 110, 120, so you can work it out this way very quickly. If you're running three bars, it's three kilos a bar, right? Three, that's maximum, that's with the feet. On average, it can make it lighter, you have to work it out for yourself, but on, just on rule of thumb, three kilos bar, nine kilos. Nine kilos plus 83, is 92. If you're going to put an awning on, those brackets that go onto the awning, uh, which are these ones again, you have two of these, another kilo, 93. 93. My maths is good. That gets you to the awning stage. So now it's up to you for the awning. The alley cab awning in this case, the shadow awning, is 24 kilos. So if you just want to use a general 180 degree awning that comes straight out, um, I think they only weigh like seven or eight or nine. I don't think even that, some of them. So that gets you around about in the 90 kilo mark and then you add the weight inside. So let's say rule of thumb, five kilos, maybe six, depending on how good or how big your uh, sleeping bag is, how many pillows, how many water bottles. So you can thresh, easily come in without an awning, 100 kilos, everything, everything. It's 100 kilos. So when you're putting it onto your car, make sure that your load rating can handle that. So that's just go straight into the book. It is in the book there. Google it, whatever you need to do. All right, enough about that. I think we've had enough about that. I'm gonna show you the inside of the tent and the, uh, the supports inside the tent to mount stuff like a fan and stuff. So now we're into uh, the actual inside of the tent and mounting um, items in the tent. So as you see here, the alley cab tent has a um, insulation here which is quite thick it's from what I can gather it's about 20 25 mil because there is from here if you listen to the sound not much extrusion nothing extrusion again so basically you can see where the rivets have gone in is where you can mount stuff so a very simple way of mounting um, through this so this is pretty important what the way we do it here is we actually get a cooker with a rivet and we burn a hole without catching the tent on fire, right? You just don't have to get it red hot and burning like a maniac. Uh, we burn a hole where we need to mount something, and then we get a drill, and then turn it, uh, then with the drill, we put a bit of uh, electrical tape on the drill itself and just exposing the tip of the drill. And what that does is it goes into the hole, and as it's turning, it doesn't grab all the fibres like the carpet. If you ever drill through carpet, you'll know you drill through it and all of a sudden you've got runs all through the carpet as it pulls it through. So that's a little trick you're going to do with that. Um, internally wise again with the tents, these are twin fabric. So there is an inner and outer and when you are closing and opening it up, it helps uh, one uh, with the water that you get on one side or the other. And it also has a little bit extra insulation because as you know, air is the best insulator of all. Mattress is 75 mil. There is underneath this, and I don't know if Artie can come around. Artie, can you come around here? Okay, so down here also you've got a foam sponge here. Don't worry about these lights, this is uh, not the new, new one. The new lights have a USB charger down on my left, and the light is up here with a switch down here. So no longer do you go down to your feet and the light's up brilliantly. We actually got it on, on our Hilux at the moment. Um, uh, as far as condensation, Rift-hold tents all have condensation issues. If anyone ever tells you otherwise, mm, not true. They do have problems. The problem is uh, they use such a good canvas and when you zip them up and you have two people with a thermal difference, say it's four, minus four degrees outside and there's two of you in here, no one ever leaves the windows open. I don't, I have electric blanket, I close it up and uh, in the morning, everything is wet inside. Um, then if you run away early in the morning and close the tent like that, all that will eventually drop and get onto the floor and it will wet your mattress. Just the way it is. Um, to resolve that, listen guys, listen. Open your windows. 
not me, I'll deal with the water. But uh, it's again, it's something that you need to know. Uh, these are fantastic. In the mornings when the sun goes up, you will not see it go up. So you can easily sleep in till eight, nine, ten o'clock, whatever. So it's not a see-through thing. When they're closed up, they are dark. And again, that's why there are shooters and stuff play like this, because uh, they're shooting all night and then they wake up a little bit later in the uh, morning. Alrighty, what we'll do now is we'll go to uh, the ladder attachment and I'll show you the different options for the ladders on this. And uh, we'll go again back to the back of the tent and we'll do an open up and show you how that works. Alrighty, so ladders, ladders, more ladders. How are you going to get in your tent? You've got a 270, you've got a canopy, you've got a 200 series. They all have their own issues. Um, so when you're building a canopy, uh, these are the aluminium canopies. These are not the canopies that go straight back to the tubs because they do not have a problem at all, especially for the entry for the back corner, which is where this one is on my car. So for the, for the canopy guys, when you're building a canopy, the door angle of the door is important. The ladder, whether it be this one or the external bar, needs to be at a circle angle. So if your canopy comes out too far, you can never get the ladder to the uh, driver's side door opening. So in your build, draw it up, try and make the ladder goes. All it is, is the difference is the angle of the canopy is just further down. And that way you can bring your tent across. Now talking about positioning the tent on that and helping with that, the tent is 1400 wild like we talk, then there's a bracket and an awning. So now instead of um, you putting the tent directly in the centre, you offset it at least sometimes 70, 80 mil to the right. One, one that helps you with the ladder mounting, right? Um, because it's offset, because when you're looking at the back of the tent with an awning on it, uh, it looks really kind of funny and it also puts the awning in jeopardy. It kind of brings it out towards the outside of the left-hand mirror. So what we do normally is just move it across 70 mil. This helps a lot on 200 series, helps a lot on the canopies, especially with the hump, because that extra 70 mil brings a tent out a little bit further and it does work, you can get it. So when you're putting your tent on, we always recommend that you put on towels, on whatever runners you got. So you put the, say if you've got rhino racks, you put three towels on three, three of the racks, put the tent on top and then slide it around. Slide the tent around, put the ladder to where you need it, bring the tent backwards and forwards. If you have to move the bars, you have to move the bars and to make it work however your car works. 200 series, they've got a little bit bigger on the, on the back side, on the rear quarters, and um, they themselves will end up having to use the, um, I've tried my hardest, end up having to use the extendable ladder, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, the canopies we just covered, which were where the actual cut down is, the further down it is, the easier it is for you to get a ladder on. Okay, so this is the alley cab ladder and this is what it's supplied. Um, the ladder is fantastic. I like this ladder. I use this ladder myself. My car is just the right height, any higher and it'll be no good. So you can see the lift that I have on my car and some of the other cars get much higher again. Um, it does come in a bag like this, right? And this fits in your tent. So I'm just going to throw this in this tent. Okay. And there is plenty of room in your tent for four pillows, sleeping bag, electric blanket, water bottles, and the ladder, and it all still closes. So that's not really a big issue. Now the other option is for the other guys is I'll just pull this off, put this to the side. The other option is uh, we call this a Chinese ladder. It's uh, 2.6 meters long. Uh, what you do is you remove the clip that's existing. I'll just bring this one down for Adi to have a look at. So you see that bracket there? We just remove that and we put it on the other ladder. Pretty straightforward. These are not expensive. I think they've been making these at the speed of light out of China, but that's okay. So basically, I need my glasses, do I? Yeah, I do. Right, 
it would help if I had my short lookers on because I can't really focus on that. Um, as you see, the ladder is very simple. Not much to say about it. Now, the, the thing with the ladder mounting bracket is, uh, to help you get in and out ergonomically wise, if you're sleeping with your head out the front end, your hip will end up about here somewhere, right? And then you move the ladder across to the left. So when you turn out, you don't have to search for the ladder. Again, the same when you're uh, sleeping with the head at the other end, you'd move it further off to the other side. Again, so that when you turn, just naturally your leg finds the ladder. So in the middle of the night on those cold nights where you need to go uh, for, um, yeah, and then get back in, not freeze, uh, it does help, especially if you had too much port. Stop drinking port. Um, now the uh, other accessories you can mount, because now uh, another feature or, or um, how would you say it, uh, a good and bad thing. Good thing, the gas struts are internally mounted. The bad thing, it takes from that 1400 mil, it takes about 40 or 50 mil out from inside the tent, which is basically, I'll just show you here. There it is. There's the inside of the tent. That's how much you're talking about. So the tent internally wise is 12, at the narrowest is 1200 at the front and 12, no, 13, 20, oh, wait a second. I forgot my measurement. I can't remember it, it's too hard. Yeah, 1270, 1270. So at the widest it's 1270 and at the narrowest it's about 1200, all right? So the good points about this, it is protected and the alley cab bar is nice and straight. It's protected and also gives you the option to mount accessories on. Like right here, right now, we have the, uh, the ensuite, and this was using the existing front mount, as you can see here, the existing awning mount and another adapter mount that runs onto the accessory rail. And as you can see, while I'm here and showing this, uh, we also use the front of the tent to mount my massive air cleaner, which is still too small. Um, so, so when, don't look at the air cleaner. Um, so when you're looking at um, mounting stuff, it's a lot easier to mount. So we'll go back to tent number one over here. And as you can see, with the option with the alley cab tent, because there's an internal, um, internal uh, cavity. So I'm just gonna quickly open this up. Right, so what you hear, see here now is there's an internal cavity. My fingers are both sides. And you can mount along this gutter. So this is where you run your wires for your solar panel. So the solar panel will drill straight into the side here. Do one, drill through the side, do one nice loop and back down here. This is a tent that we use on cars and you know, do pictures and whatever else. You can see the seal line right here. So everything, this side is open game. Drill, screw, don't forget the elastic, do whatever you please, because it's not gonna interfere with anything. Um, this cavity is great help because it just makes life a little bit easier. You can mount th stuff a lot easier. Um, right, while we're here at the back of the tent, I'll go you one more time, and we're just gonna show you the back of the tent. So for those guys, I'll stay there, Artie, I'll just grab my bolt, right. So these runners here, I really need my short lookers. Sometimes there's too much powder coating on there, you'll have to flick off the powder coating inside to run the bolt in. It's not a big issue, but it happens because they, got, they just put a little bit too much around the corner because you're hitting a few times. So you have two channels, one on each side with the extrusion, so that means you can put your mounting brackets anywhere. Another great support, which is welded on, and if you have a look underneath, it's all welded, everything's welded on. There's no rivets used. You have a rear mounting ladder rack on standard on all the tents. So they come with this and they come with one on the ladder that mounts to the railings as I showed you before. Um, what else is there? Um, right, let's go over to this part here. Right, so this is your mounting of the um, corner bracket for the awning. So when you're looking at this, it's a very simple thing. There's um, just 
what we use is an earbud, lead, paint, push it in, then you get your mark, centre punch and drill, 8.5mm hole. At the back, they've got backing plates in stainless steel or in aluminium. I'm not sure what they're up to at the moment, but they're all lousy at the moment, they're all stainless. So everything is stainless on this and it's fantastic. Same procedure to the front of the tent. Um, the bungee cord is pretty straightforward. Putting these in is uh, pretty straightforward. Right, your tent's done. This does uh, flop around. It really is not really uh, a problem in the wind. Um, if the wind is coming from that side, you throw it over on the other side. And it does sometimes annoy you if you're in the middle of the night and the wind does come over. But uh, you learn a little bit as you go, like with everything. Right, so now we're just about done. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, the Alley Cab product is a very good product. It's been around for a very long time. They've so sorted most, or if not all, the issues they've ever had. Um, so it's a really good product. Again, you do your own research. Um, go to YouTube, go to forums, uh, just do your due diligence when you're buying a tent. Measurements are always very important as well. How you mount things are really important. Um, there are great aspects of the tent, so that's all fine. Look, we are going to do a few more videos, and thank you for hanging around so long. Um, yeah, there's a lot to get through, and I probably missed a lot of it. Um, the condensation, I'm going to get a million comments at the bottom. Open your windows, guys. The guys who have got thinner fabric, that they breathe easier. These ones won't. They've got two fabrics, remember? Um, so please join, subscribe, uh, enjoy your camping, and I'll see you out there, eh? Here we go, guys. Yeah, see what that? Hey, it says, one of these to be drink before you open a beer. Oh my God. All right, it's enough. Let's put these away. See, I missed showing them how to put the tent in. How to put the tent in uh, without the uh, dropping the air out of it, otherwise it billows, bellows. And this, put it underneath. Oh my god, what have we done? Let the air out, remember? Yeah. Water, let's go. I want to go home. See you guys.